Janet Kay's Eternally Grateful. Wow. Which had, of course, it, had which, that kind of beat. And it had an instrumental. Okay. It had an instrumental. Right. And then, obviously, there was things like Good Times by Chic, which yeah. had a long break. Mm -hmm. You could rap on that, but there wasn't much that you could rap on. This is crazy until when you think about how far MCing in UK culture has gone, you know, drum and bass, grime, drill. You know, the buck stops here. Mm. Like, it, you really were the first to adapt sound system to lyric, to rap. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, not central London, but you deserve to be here. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers. Join in, set, subscribe, be part of the culture. And if you want more of that culture, hit the Keller Vision app free download, iPhone, Android, for your street culture sports, all these big docs, mini docs, mixes, and all the bits and bobs, you know, it's all there for you. Free, free. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from Street the stage chief rocker is the streetwear of champions um we are in leeds and uh, when in leeds you have to find these pioneers and we've looked everywhere far and wide for the most original the original first generation mc and we're not talking we're not talking what we know in london we're talking about first first generation 1983 to be precise from the <sighs> From the sound system culture onwards, this gentleman has paved way. And over here is most definitely celebrated, and we're celebrating him right near the life and times at Dirty Speedo and us. <laughs> Chilla Keller, thank you very much. And welcome to Sunny Leeds. Yes, yes yeah. it's, been, it's been pretty good to me, really, this this this, uh, this afternoon. It's been very good, nice. Good, good. How are you? I'm good. I just finished a day's work. I do, uh, I do courier work. I deliver parcels locally. Yes. Um, that's what I do for a living. Yes. Um, a very yeah, understated yeah. job for a pioneer, I might add. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, it's what, what I do these days. And yeah, yeah, it works for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also it funds the creative um, aspects of, of your life, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of what it's all about, isn't it? I think <clears throat> I've been doing this thing for three years and uh, I, I did it because I actually wanted to do other things. I was trying to raise money for other things, but it just seems to be, this is what I've decided to do. I do it six days a week. Mm. It, it funds what I'm trying to do. And uh, so the ideas that I initially wanted to do have kind of grown. Uh, so I'm still doing it. Um, mm -hmm. And I have some plans, I have some ideas. Music, musically and, and otherwise. So. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine sometimes that stability allows for a lot, especially when driving around with the people in the city, Curing whatever it is you're doing, it's like ideas, they, they have a chance to blossom, don't they, as well, creatively? Uh, my, my work at the moment is kind of very social and uh, <clears throat> I meet varied types of people. Mm. It's, and the, the jobs I've done have been very interactive sort of mm. socially. So I do tend to network with people mm. that I meet on the job mm -hmm. and it, it does happen. Extremely People's yeah. person, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Dude, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people right now that are listening to us thinking, get to the meat. We want the details. Because you are an original. You're one of the first generation MCs that when hip hop landed in this country, I mean, you, you know, Rodney P, tell me I'm not wrong. Tell me. It's the truth. <laughs> How do. Uh, give me a description of the landscape of its time. Let's get into the details. Think back to the middle middle of the 80s. Give us a description of how hip-hop impacted the uh, UK and how it, uh, it, was, it was embraced and how you embraced it. Okay. <clears throat> prior to... Uh, prior to the hip-hop thing, we were involved in reggae sound system. And I was an, and I became an MC on a sound system called Maverick, Maverick International. <laughs> now on that sound system there were three MCs, and I'll give, I'll give their names: KD Ranko, Daddy Stylo, on camera, Daddy Samson. <laughs> Those are the three main guys from Maverick International Sound. 
Now, most of the guys in Leeds sort of patterned ourselves off of those guys. <laughs> KD used to invite people to his house and I'd say there were probably six, seven guys up there in an evening with pen and pad learning the craft. We saw KD, Pablo, Stylo and Samson. Pablo is his brother. Mm -hmm. Pablo's excellent also. So we saw them guys bobbling the dance before we left school. We were 14, 15. And I think Pablo's a little younger than me, so he would have been 13, 14, mm -hmm. mashing up dances with his lyrics. And I just thought, wow, these guys are brilliant. Now, I think my first experience, I think I'd written, a, uh, I'd written some lyrics and, uh, you know, when they have parties and it's early hours mm -hmm. and the sound is just warming up mm -hmm. and sometimes a brave MC like myself would grab the mic and try and test out a lyric. I know exactly written. what you mean. Yeah, you're trying to <laughs> test it out. It, it, the dance is empty, so mm -hmm. you're thinking, see what it sounds like. And I, I chatted these lyrics, I won't repeat them, but it was KD and Pablo, they both came into the room and said, Speedo. What, stop? Never, ever chat that lyric stop publicly it, again. Really? <laughs> oh, charming. And Almost then, halted the career of a man. Yes. But it was a good thing, because these guys were mentors and... Uh, you know, I, I, was, I was speaking to a friend of mine today. We'll get back on the story, mm -hmm. but I was speaking to a friend of mine today and saying, look, who were the people that inspired you? That's what he asked me. And I said, well, the people that initially inspired me were in the community that I was raised in. Initially, mum and dad, mm. and then my big brother, Ansel, who, to me, he was like Muhammad Ali, Bob Marley and Bruce Lee mixed up in one. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Wicked. And then there were... The athletes in the community, Joe Gatewood, Toff, Eric and Eric Alfords, um, and uh, and his brother Lloyd, Lloyd Alfords. These guys were sprinters, and Peter Copeland. Now these guys were sprinters. Mm. They were the top. They were the peak of excellence yeah, in yeah, my yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. And I would watch them train and work and um, and practice for and and my heroes were right here in Leeds. The people that I aspired to and that I aspired to be like were right here mm -hmm. before anybody on TV. So uh, when it came to the sound system thing, KD Ranko, Daddy Stamson, Daddy Stylo and Pablo D were the guys that I followed. Now, <clears throat> what happened was uh, from 1979, obviously, Sugar Hill Gang, mm -hmm. I was still at school and uh, I learned all of that, just learned it off by heart. I would bore my friends on the way to school, rapping, <laughs> rapper, rapper's delight on the way to school. And, uh, and then obviously 1981, I left school and got involved in sound system and mm. started writing my own bars and uh, became one of the Maverick MCs. Um, and I wasn't really much of an MC mm. until hip hop happened. And then because I was doing something different on the sound system, the problem we had, though, was that we couldn't find any instrumentals to rap over. Mm -hmm. So I would try and rap over reggae. It didn't really work well, but I would find something like um, Janet Kay's Eternally Grateful. Wow. Which had, of course, uh, had which, that kind of beat. And it had an instrumental. You okay. Had an instrumental. Right. And then, obviously, there was things like Good Times by Sheik, which yeah. had a long break. Mm -hmm. You could rap on that, but there wasn't much that you could rap on. This is crazy until when you think about how far MCing in UK culture has gone, you yeah. know, drum and bass, grime, drill, you know, the buck stops here. Mm. Like, it, you really were the first to adapt sound system to lyric, to rap. I mean, I will say that there were one or two rappers in Leeds, but they were bedroom rappers. And I would have called myself a bedroom rapper if I hadn't had the outlet of a sound system to rap mm -hmm. publicly on. And I ha if I hadn't had people like Stylo, Pablo, KD to show me how to do it, because they these guys were performing, mm. I watched how they did it and learned how to perform watching them. But obviously I just came in with the hip hop thing, mm -hmm. which was a little something different. Twisted it up. Yeah. And that would have been like 82, 83 time. Could you yeah. see the... the, the uh, the landscape change with hip hop's landing in the UK. Could you feel the momentum building? Was the, could you feel it on the street? 
we just knew it was something brilliant. It was something because <clears throat> all right, before I was rapping, I was like I say MCing, but I was also part of a breakdance group. So we, I was part of a group called Connection Four. Nice. Myself, Junior, um, Junior Patterson, um, Glenroy Rawlins, and Joseph Mills. So yeah, we were Connection Four, uh, and we performed at many events, um, the West Indian Centre, and it was people like Arthur France and Ian Charles that gave us the opportunity to use the back room of the West Indian Centre to rehearse. So we'd rehearse our routines there mm -hmm. with the permission of the guys that run the place. And then they asked us to perform at the carnival events that they did. So Game Hudders changer. Yeah, Huddersfield did their first carnival mm -hmm. event. It was a small event in the park and we were asked to come along and perform there. Um, and we did quite a few performances in Leeds as, as Connection 4. And we, we, in fact, we went to London. And um, one of the biggest things we did was uh, Steve Walsh. A lot of people will remember this guy. Steve Walsh was, used to do All Dayers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Steve Walsh and uh, I forget the guy he used to work with. Honestly, I forget his name. But anyway, we went to London on a coach to an All Dayer at the Hammersmith Palais. Nice. And, and as Connection 4... Comment below. If you know, you know. Yeah? Uh -huh. As Connection 4, we got a joint third, I believe, if I re recall correctly. But I think we got a joint third. But, you know, as a small body pop popping group from the north, from the north we yeah. went to London and kind of did pretty well. But it had, the oppor it had legs, didn't it? They, from what I understand, the hip-hop culture, because it was making its own noise in each city, yeah. it, it made you movable. You were able to travel, and then that could, the competitions would show up. So like you say, the Hammersmith all day, next thing was Fresh 86. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Th this is the thing about, because um, even sound system, you, with the sound system as an MC, you're traveling to different cities yeah. with the sound. Yeah. You might only be there for an evening, yeah. but you, you link with people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go and be a guest on their sound system, mm -hmm. but... Um, this is the same thing with hip hop. Hip hop just had other elements to it. Mm. It had the MC thing, it had the music, the, the DJing thing, and it, and it had um, the, the graffiti, the break dancing, and different elements. So, mm. as a dancer, it was perfect for me. But then, as an MC, what happened with me? One of the reasons, actually, I, um, I actually started to rap was because Junior Patterson said to me one day, he said, Speedo, you break dance, right? I said, yeah. He said, but you MC. I said, okay. He said, well, that's reggae. Break dances is mm -hmm. American. Mm -hmm. That's Jamaican. So why don't you rap? I said, yeah, but I don't rap. I didn't know how to pattern it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to I listen to it and I could do the, I could copy Sugar Hill Gang, but yeah. how to do my own and write my own bars, I didn't know. So yeah. what happened was Junior gave me my first bars. Whoa. Yeah. Was he wrote them and Junior was a bedroom rapper. And he was very good, mm. but maybe a bit shy and didn't do it publicly. But mm. he gave me my first bars. So my first rap bars were, my name's Daddy Speedo when I'm on the mic. I try to keep fit when I ride my bike. And if you don't like it, you can take a hike because I'm Daddy Speedo when I'm on your mic. Now that was given to me by Junior because he initially said, my name's JP and I'm on the mic. I try to get so on. Yeah. So I just changed it from JP to Daddy Speedo. And then I just added on to that. So initially what happened was, Junior Patterson gave me my first bars, which gave me the patterning. Mm. Because you have to, you know, <clears throat> what I mean by patterning is, uh, when we were doing um, MCing back in the day mm -hmm. on, the, on the sound system, people had a certain pattern. We come a dance all and we mm. rock the rhythm. Me never that they speed up and they might talk in. Then somebody came, I think, I can't remember who the guy was, but they came with this thing called fast style, where you had to know how to, do it double time mm. and a lot of people couldn't do it we really stumbled and we tripped over because we just didn't know how to do the patterning that's yeah you it's, understand? it's so, so under so uh, it's it's not as obvious because when you're doing it from scratch back in the day mm -hmm. you're learning as you go yes yes so I, I i learned how to do it and just by listening you listen and i did this bar which i still use today and it started off with chicken and rice jummy can rice your chat Panamite, not chat, them twice. 
So chicken and rice, Jamaican ice. Chopping a mic, not chatting twice. Chat too long, you lose your boss. That is without other people's chance. You need to cover them more at your chance. Smell the food, you smell the spice. Chicken and rice, don't break the size. All the food, they're too enticed. But in a... Yeah. Here you go. So it's just... You start, so, so we learned how to do that. And it was, it was, it was almost like a eureka moment mm -hmm. when the first Leeds MC learned how to do, bi we call it bionic. The bionic. We called it bionic. Double timing, we call it bionic. I think everyone else called it fast style, but we called it bionic. It was what married people. Is that where, so where did Daddy Speedo come from? Where did, where did that name come from? Okay. One of the guys I mentioned earlier was um, Eric Olfers. Mm -hmm. we, call him, we call him Bopper or Toff. Toff uh, was present at the West Indian Centre probably in 1981 when we'd left school and it, there was nowhere else for us, the youth, to hang out in the evening. And we'd go to the West Indian Centre, which was newly opened. Mm -hmm. It was a new building, newly opened. Like I say, Arthur, Chance, Arthur France and Ian Charles were the guys that ran it. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, there was a, an area where dominoes was played and there were several domino tables, but these older fellows who played dominoes didn't want to play with us young school leavers. So we were like 15, 16, mm. 17, and we wanted to play. Yeah. So we petitioned Arthur France and Ian Charles for a table in the corner. They don't want to play with us, so let us, let us have a table. So they gave us a table. <laughs> yeah. And when you're playing dominoes, if you're playing with your partner across the table, you have to be able to read signs and read your hand and uh, unfortunately for me I wasn't playing too quickly <laughs> I was playing very slowly because I couldn't both, read well. the cards yeah, very yeah, yeah. well and so that became a joke and uh, Toff said Speedo man come on Speedo that as in Speedo yeah, yeah. come on Speedo and the right people were present and the name stuck so I decided to wear it as a t-shirt and it became dude like, there's nothing better than, my artist's name. <laughs> nothing better than an artist's name yeah. that has a story to it yeah, yeah. that's better. how I got the name mm. that's it yeah mm. Mm. to a lot of people that are watching this uh, they'll they'll most likely see you as an okay sign so far as you're here mm. present active creating constantly evolving new ideas i mean we were only talking just before you we jumped on you know you're you're re reverting um a level of your creativity back to the to, to the original reggae roots um when when you have hip-hop ever evolving and it's constantly moving and in a very jazz-like way there's still the original you know dons that are like yourself that are still in how do you as a don <laughs> How do you navigate with knowing that forecast is ever evolving? How do you keep? How do you keep uh, an, an interest? Okay? How do you keep a, a passion? How do you mm. keep? Because MCing is means so much to so many different people now. Mm. How do you? How do you evolve with with it, knowing you know that you were deaf from the, the jump? Do you know what I mean? Um, I it's think a deep it, one, isn't it? Sorry, I, yeah, I went no, off on it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, um, before I picked up a mic and started performing I was a musician mm. so I'm a musician I play a bass guitar a rhythm guitar and keyboard mm. and that's something that we had from we were kids my my mom and dad bought a piano into the house when I was probably six or seven years old mm -hmm. and because we were kids that were in the house and we couldn't go gallivanting and running around like other kids um, we had to do something in the house and keyboard just occupied a lot of my time and the keyboard was in the front room and anybody who knows about Caribbean people front room, you don't just go in the front room without permission, you get beaten. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, uh, but my mum would allow me to go in the front room and uh, as long as she heard the piano playing, yeah. so I, I'd spend hours in there playing piano. Wow. I never learned how to read music, but it was the thing, it was the thing that uh, spending hours playing piano and listening to people like Bob Marley and Stevie Wonder, mm. some two of my favourites, and um, and uh, and uh, then obviously hip hop happened and sound system happened. Mm. For a long time, I didn't do any keyboard stuff. It was only when I moved to London that I started working with a few people, and my keyboard skills came into, and that's when I got into the songwriting. So I recognise that as a rapper. Sometimes you write a rap for a piece of music, but when you look at that, those lyrics, mm. you, can, you could get three songs out of that. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm? Yeah? You yeah, can yeah. actually get three songs out of the amount of words that go into a rap. So I'm thinking, OK, songwriting is easier than rapping. Only because I know how to write melodies. Mm. I'm a keyboard player, so I know how to write melodies. I know how to write choruses, hooks. Mm. So I've kind of so that's something that developed while I was in London. But it all came from the fact that I play instruments. So I'm not just a mic guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm an instrument guy. That's interesting. That's interesting. You say that. You, my mind went down a direction. Then that yeah. answers your question. Then yeah, yeah. Why I, I, I don't lose because the, you're the not passion. losing the. F yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get absolutely. Yeah. But then just to add value to that, because mm. um, a lot of MC culture nowadays is literally bar off thirty plus bars and and get the reload. Congratulations. Mm. There's no hooks or choruses. Mm. Um, a lot of people from the era right up probably till mid 90s noughties i mean people like paul mccartney thought it was easy to rap do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. everyone's having a go at rapping phil collins ever go at rapping you know what i mean like um they don't know the nuances uh although they got the instrumentation if you're a leading mc first i mean arguably you're doing four times more ver you know four times more verses than the average singer songwriter you're putting down a lot of words and you know you you chuck d any chuck d song and it's just like jesus rock him the depth of lyrics per verse it, from from that era era of hip hop is yeah. incredible isn't it yeah yeah i mean i i think that it's in, it, it's interesting for for me that when you ask the question about my um, how, to, how to stay focused on this. Mm. I listen to people like Kaney. You, you don't know Kaney? No. Kaney is an MC from Leeds and uh, Kaney, I've never heard him repeat himself once. <laughs> Kaney is a guy that's like, um, what's that guy, Little Wayne? Mm-hmm, okay. A way, Little Wayne doesn't write anything. Mm -hmm. Kaney's like that. Kaney does write sometimes mm -hmm. for stuff, for album stuff, but Kenny is a guy that, when I'm in the booth or in the arena with him, mm -hmm. I've got to step up my game. Yeah. And there are some people, and I tell him that, and I say it publicly, there are some people when I'm in the arena with them, I have to step up my game. Because I know I'm an old school guy, but somehow I managed to still freestyle. I've learned to freestyle. It's not something I learned, I could, I could, mm, it's not something I was, beast, yeah, right? It's not something I was very good at, yeah. but I've learned to do that. Now, what it is, is, uh, I asked Kaney one day, I said, how is it that you freestyle so well? How do you do it? Mm. He said, when he learned to rap, he thought that everybody did that. It's, dude, it's so true. When you see people rapping, you don't realise that they've written it. When you yeah. first watch hip hop, yeah. totally, you think that's just part of the course, don't he you? He thought everybody did yeah. that. So that's how, he said he just developed it like that. And I said, that's brilliant. I said, mm. if you've come, you come to it with that mentality. Then you're already winning. Yeah. Wow. And he's brilliant. Yeah, Kenny. Kenny. Yeah, old yeah. tight Kenny. Uh, yeah, drop drop comments. Tell us more. Yeah. If you're in Leeds, tell us what's up. Yeah. Um, give me some more, Kenny. Give me some more Dons from Leeds era of, hip, of uh, UK hip hop. Ooh. LSK. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All rounder. And uh, one of the best production guys. I mean, a, a lot of my material is done with LSK. Dope. LSK production. So, nice. Yeah. And LSK worked And MC with as well then, so both. MC, vo MC vocalist, producer, just a bit of a, and graffiti guy. Nice. He's a bit of an uh, all-rounder. Certain things he does, I don't know. That's the hip-hop spirit, you yeah. see. Well, a a LSK was the backing singer for Maxi Jazz. Oh, wee. Yeah, okay. Faithless. Yeah, of course. Faithless, yeah. Rest in peace, Maxi Jazz. Rest in peace, yeah. yeah. Oh, gee. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, from Leeds. Um, yeah, let's get him in. He was at the event, the Rodney P event the other night. Um, his name is D Busy. D Busy. Or D Brown, D Busy. Uh, I did a... Uh, I invited a lawyer from London to come to Leeds and do Battle Scars at the West Indian Centre. Right. What year was that? 19... 2001? Something like that. Audience. <laughs> yeah. Big yeah. up Dave. Battle yeah. Scars in Leeds. Big West up Monk. Indians. Yeah, yeah. It was the first time they did Battle Scars outside of London. So, and that was... Uh, and, that's, an OG, and, that's an OG platform. Oh, yeah, yeah. Play, yeah. And uh, DBZ entered that competition and won that competition. Wow. 
yeah. So I've always got big respect for DBZ. You also got Tommy Evans and Jest and um, uh, who else we got? Uh, Skinny Man. No, my guy. Jest, I know of. Tommy Evans, I know of, and I've, I've met a couple of times, but mm. I don't know his material. Mm -hmm. Skinny Man, I'm more familiar yeah. with with Skinny Man. Yeah. Um, and then you've also got crews that are not really active anymore. There was a some guys called Stay Focused. Stay Focused. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Yorkshire Terriers. Yorkshire Terriers. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's the name of the year, bro. That's Terriers. the one. Yeah. Yorkshire Tea. I love a good name. I love a good name. Yeah. Yorkshire Terriers. Yeah. Get it in. And then you've got the uh, guys like Citizen Science, who was in uh, Big Brother for a season. Mm -hmm. um, that's and, right. And he's got a new album out now. Nice, nice. Um, and the younger one's coming up as well. You've got people like... Um, Yefe. Yefe. Yefe is performing and performed at the last event that I did and it surprised me. I, I didn't know he had bars like that, but oh, he's brilliant. Right. And he's on the next event, which is on the 5th of November at the museum. There you go. And you went there today, yeah, right? Yeah, banging the museum, Leeds Museum. Yeah. You know, so, they've got it going on. Yeah, so that's an event. Uh, it's, a, it's a celebration for the coronation, I forget which, 90th, correct? Anyway, for Haile Selassie. <laughs> 93rd, there you go, 93rd, 93rd coronation of uh, Emperor Ali Selassie of Ethiopia. Wow. And there's a few artists on, I'm one of the artists on that's a that event. And I'm, I'm honoured, I'm honoured to be, to be even be asked huge. to do that. Yeah. yeah. But Yef, Yefe is on that, um, and uh, Raki, Raki Regan and DMW. Yeah, come Beatbox on, dude. DMW's come on. on that My event. Guy. My so guy. I, it's an honour to, yeah. to be asked to do that, honestly, really. Oh, it's, it's seismic. It's, 5th it's of November, Lee's Museum. Yeah, man. It's one for your. It's one for your, uh, um, for your scrapbook. That you, you know, it's yeah. badge of honor. Yeah. Real, real talk, isn't yeah. it? Give me some more badge of honors. Give me some things where you're just like, yo, I can't believe I did that. You know, because we talk about early doors, but like, it was. Just, there must have been some real f moments of. That's that's moving the dial. What we just did there moved the dial. Yeah. Like bad meaning good, for instance. Okay, that was one. Yeah, that moved the dial. Bro. That was one. Um, uh, explain that because he, he, he was in the he was in the seminal uh, documentary, Bad Meaning Good. You, uh, if, if you're not from New York, <laughs> Google that. Bad Meaning Good was a documentary made in uh, oh, gosh 1987 yeah. by Tim Westwood. It was a, I think it was open space. Tim Westwood um, documentary, mm -hmm. and uh, myself and my rap partner Flyboy D. Um, were asked to uh, feature on that. Mm -hmm. um, Tim called me at home, because in them days, Tim called people personally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and said, would you like to be involved in this, this documentary? And we said, yeah. So we went along to Labrook Grove. And, uh, Labrook Grove? Yeah, okay. yeah. And they found a backdrop, sort mm. of graffiti-ish type backdrop, and yeah. we performed there. Nice. And yeah, yeah. And... Uh, yeah. That was a big dial. That yeah, was a big dial yeah. of any any other yeah. ones. I mean, actually, let's stick with Bad Meaning Good actually for a bit because this mm. was again this was another seminal. Uh, it was like a magnifying glass on the scene. Um, I mean, you mentioned Labrador Grove. You know, mm -hmm. the amount of the amount of activity that was going on. There, you know, graffiti wise. You know, you had the pit, you had the tabernacle, all these different areas in which you were, and also the flyover where Futura famously done done his piece. I mean, you know, you literally were dropped into the centre of activity. Um, how was how was it on set? What was it? What was the vibe like? And and what was the what was the impact like when it came out? Okay. <clears throat> On set, I don't remember much of that. Okay. I remember we arrived and Tim wasn't there. There was a group of students with film equipment, camera, microphones, and uh, we gave them a tape with the, I forget the name of the track now, but it was a Public Enemy backing track. Nice. Which we'd managed to string together mm -hmm. <laughs> back to back. You know, we did it, it was, a tape, it was a tape edit. Gotcha. It was in them tape edit. You know, so we did yeah, that. Real to real kind of business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Real to real, no, tape edit. Stop. Oh, start, pause and put. Stop, 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 three one. stop, <laughs> start, pause. It was one of If you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How Maxi Jazz used to make his jingles. Stop it. Maxi Jazz used to make his stop, start jingles before we had samplers, before we had computers. Yo, that's yeah. some stuff that a lot of people feel like they invented, but it turns out everyone was doing yeah, yeah. it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Stop, start, stop, start, start, stop, stop, stop. That's how we did it. Maxi yeah. did it like that too. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, we went along. <laughs> 
to this shoot and uh, we bought the tape and we played that in the background while we performed. That's why it sounds really low level on, on the documentary. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and we performed that and then they filmed us walking over uh, a bridge and, uh, and that was that. It was nothing special. It was uh, a meeting with some students who shot us performing our bars. And, that was, uh, yeah. and what was it like once it was released? I can't say. It was just nice to see yourself on the box, mm. uh, doing something, um, doing some conscious bars. Mm. Yeah. It was conscious, wasn't it? Yeah. The rich, the poor, the north and the south, black and white, these divisions we have to sort out. A divided nation in so many ways. I'm unemployed, can't even afford to take a holiday. Away from the society that's getting rough. Can't even take out my girl, I think she's had enough. But it seems she's been infected by material gains. And if that's the way you want it, we'll go your way. Because there's more to life than the having and holding. Money and lust for the things that you're beholding. There's caring and sharing and teaching the youth to stop the nonsense and listen to the truth. See, material pleasure is all that you seek because your will is strong. But your flesh is weak, hard drug, fast living, and alcohol. The supplier gets rich, but the losers fall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, now who gets out on their podcast? Yeah. Tell me now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was the bars from Bad Meaning Good. Yeah, it was. And, and we recorded that. We actually went to the studio with a band because myself and Fly, we. People don't know what the things that we did because we never actually had. A record out. We never actually got the deal, mm. um, but I saw the bull I broke, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what happened was we ended up doing um, uh, working with a band called Funk You. Mm, Funk You. Yeah, we worked with a band called Funk You, and they were kind of a rocky, funky band. Mm. And we did a few events in universities, and then we also had an opportunity to travel in a tour fashion with. Red Wedge. Red Wedge, yeah. that rings bells. Right. Neil Kinnock campaigned to be the Prime Minister for the UK. Mm. And Red Wedge was the music band that, sorry, the music group that went and campaigned on his behalf in different cities. Neil Kinnock, if you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, uh, on that tour was Junior Giscom. Wow. Fergil, Fergil Sharkey. Wow, yeah. Um, uh, what's her name again? Gotta find a way, gotta find a way, yeah. Gotta find a way to get... I forget her name now. Oh. Lorna G. Yep, Lorna G, Junior Giscom, Furville Sharkey, and a few other people. Mm. And a guy called Porkies, who I think his name became Phil Jupiter. Phil Jupiter, yeah. He was oh, okay. the guy who was presenting, I think that's the guy. Mm. But yeah, we were on tour with them. That's amazing. They put, they put us up in hotels and we did. And that was with the Hip Hop Alliance. Wow. Do you know, do you know about the Hip Hop no, Alliance? No, 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 tell me. Okay. A lot of the things that we, my, myself and Flyboy D did, we were, we were rap conscious. Mm -hmm. but Daddy Speed on Flyboy D. And we worked with a guy called Hip Hop Alliance, sorry, a guy called Ricky Reynolds <laughs> from the Hip Hop Alliance. Now, the Hip Hop Alliance used to put on events at the Brixton Recreation Centre. Right. And one of the first national breakdowns competitions was held right there. When I say first national, I'm not sure. Yes, it, actually, it was before Freestyle 85. It was before E, it was before e Freestyle 85. What? Was that that, is that that shirt that's in your thing that the Danny Price sent through to you? Yeah, I'll check that. Yeah. Ricky, Ricky Reynolds put events on at the Brick, Brixton Recreation <laughs> Centre and he invited uh, the guys from Nottingham. What were the breakdowns crew from Nottingham? Oh, um, um, dumb, um, big, big crew, big bad crew. Uh, 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 GLC, Hip Hop Jam. That was it. Oh, can you believe that? Yeah, yeah, there you go. That might there you go. Not, check this out. That, check this out. That might not be Ricky's. How that, crazy is wow, that? Wow, that's Told brilliant. You. Look at that. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. GLC. It's exactly what I said, dude. Right. In Brixton, thank, yeah. you, thank you, monks. I yeah, appreciate yeah. Big that. Up, monk. That looks very yeah, familiar. You couldn't write now, it. Now, hear what? <laughs> Rick, Ricky was very involved with the GLC, mm -hmm. Greater, London, Greater London Council. And I think they gave him a lot of funding to, mm -hmm. to fund events that Hip Hop Alliance had put on. So there was another event that Ricky did, um, as well as Rock the... Rock City Breakers. 
Rock City. Nottingham Rock City Breakers. The Rock Sorry. City Breakers. Sorry, I got Arsenal. completely distracted. Yeah. I was thinking it through, and yeah. it cleared, cleared my mind. Yeah. It's good. Um, and at, yeah, at the at the recreation centre events, it was honestly, uh, I can't, truly unique. Mm-hmm. Darnell, Ooh. you know about Darnell? Yeah, well, I love about Darnell. Yeah, smooth body mm-hmm. popper, really, Heavy. really nice brother, yeah. really nice guy. Did so much work with him back in the day with the Hip Hop Alliance. That's dope. Yeah, Hip Hop Alliance released. Um, the first single by MC Mello and Moni Love. Whoa. They were called Just Bad. They released a track called Free on, on one side and I forget what the other side. Freestyle was on the other side. Wow. And that was that was released by Ricky Reynolds and the label was called Go on. Go on, on son. Go on, Nearly. Tough Groove. Tough Groove. The label was Tough Groove. Yes. He released that. Wow. He released um Oh, the name is just to slip me now. You're doing great. This is incredible. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is like knowledge <laughs> sign. Yeah, but he released, uh, uh, I forget his name now. No, I'm, Freshkey. Freshkey. Freshkey and Mo Rock. Mm-hmm, there you go. Freshkey Boom. and Mo Rock. Oh, absolutely brilliant, brilliant production. That track, fantastic. But he released that. Um, I can't remember who else he released. Ah, Dynamic 3. Dynamic 3. They did a track called I Feel Dynamic. Yeah, released on the And you can Google check all maybe. of this stuff online. Just, you know, just hit yeah, the Google, yeah. hit the YouTube. You know what I mean? That's yeah. like all this so stuff. So R- Ricky there. was really, really, really pivotal wow. for a lot of. And also the Brixton, um, the Battersea Art Centre, he put on events there. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of things happening early 85, because I arrived in London 1984, late 84. Mm-hmm. And when I arrived, I took part in the rap competition that was at the WAG Club. There you go. I went there with Flyboy D, Mm -hmm. Curtis Walker, comedian, Mm -hmm. and a few other guys from Brixton. And we went as a sort of a loose crew. We'd done a few little sessions together. Mm -hmm. We thought we had something, but when we got there, it wasn't a crew competition, it was an individual competition. How did that go once you uh, discovered that? I decided to enter. You went in? Nice. I got a joint second. Junior G came first, Dizzy Heights and myself were joint second. Yo, that's hard. I don't remember who came third, but uh, I came joint second. And, and that was after being in London probably a month. And that, that was my first premiere performance in London. Bravery, man. Like, yeah. with hip-hop, what it teaches you is yeah. to jump in at the deep end and learn to swim. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. it? Whether it's, like you say, moving to London, getting to know the people, and then battling them all within the same space of time. Yeah. Yeah. If it was a team, then all of a sudden you got to go individual. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? These are the, these are the schoolings. These are lessons that you're... you're you're given. Yeah. Battling is something that I didn't really do. No, Competition, don't blame you. performance, yeah. Yeah. But battling, I wasn't the battle freestyle guy. I no. could write bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, said, I came into freestyling later on. I've mm. learned how to do that. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah. These are all lessons that you learn as you go, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and to have been such a big part, not just as part as Daddy Speedo, but also being present in amongst movers and shakers. Mm. And you, I guess you didn't even give it, have enough time, yet give it the time and space to consider, where's this going? Where's this all going? I'm, uh, okay. Being in amongst movers and shakers, mm. yeah, but you don't realise it at the time. At the time, yeah. You're just, you're just doing your thing mm. and, ho- and you're hope- hopeful that something's going to come of it. Mm. Look, Movers and Shakers, Maxi Jazz. Mm. Um, when I when I arrived in London, if it wasn't for people like DJ Business, mm-hmm. I don't think I'd have had much traction. Big up Billy, yeah. Billy introduced me to his mum initially. I love that. I love her. Mm-hmm. God rest her. Um, and he introduced me to all of the guys that are anybody mm-hmm. in South London and other parts of mm-hmm. London. If it wasn't for Flyboy D and, and DJ Business, I don't think I'd have had much joy. Half the reception that yeah. you would have got. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Billy wow, opened a lot of doors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Billy. Give thanks, Billy. Yeah, big up. Honour honor, honor, honor and respect every time. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, being an outsider, I'm, I'm from the north. I'm from up here, mm. Leeds, West Yorkshire. Mm. So I've, I've landed in Brixton. I've met Billy. I've met Flyboy D. I've met Maxi Jazz. And I met T. Cut K. Because the first crew for myself and Flyboy D, we were in a crew called the BTJ Production Crew. 
Okay. Right. So BTJ is born to jam. And uh, T Cut K was an excellent mix scratch DJ. Mm. And so we teamed up with him and we did a number of warehouse jams. And you can find the warehouse jam online. No way. Yeah, born to jam or BTJ. It's there some, somewhere on YouTube. That's some but archive it, shit right and there. And it's 1985? 85. 1985. Yo, that's crazy. Yeah. See, in them days, there was no hip hop in the clubs. No. No, 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 exactly. Yeah, no. and you know, nowadays you could probably go into a club looking the way you are. Yeah, yeah. In them days, you had to literally have your Sunday best uh, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You literally had to have a shirt on and a jacket. It's you a had look to, like a soul boy. Look, yeah, soul like boy. You just come out of, you know, yeah. so Capitol you couldn't, Hill. There's no that chain and stuff, no that no. sportswear. No. no matter how clean you looked, yeah. you're not getting in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people had to set up their own events. This is why Ricky was doing what he was doing at the recreation centre, yeah. at the Battersea Art Centre. This is why they did the Bazooka Joe mm. warehouse jams with scratch mixing and people could enjoy that um, because you, you're not going to hear it in the clubs. No, you're not. You're not. Yeah. That's crazy to think. Yeah, you know how good you got it, you lot. <laughs> We're us lot, we don't know. Yeah. It's funny how uh, next, the, the next, next generation scorns the next one, the scorns the next one. It's mm. almost like the, the levels of... Um, not comp complacency sounds a bit rude, harsh. Mm. It's just funny how... Um, uh, it's it evolves to the point of n normality. It's normal. It's normalised. Yeah, like it's, it's just a given. Va Eddie Van Halen and his amazing guitar skills. H Jimi Hendrix and his amazing guitar skills. Like mm. all of a sudden, that's normalised because it's been done. Mm. And all of a sudden, that guitar suddenly becomes so passe. It just it just mm. is. Mm. And it's a good MC. It just is. Mm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Going into a club just like this just is. Mm. But there is fault lines to everything, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. I'm going to show you something. Go on. <clears throat> okay, Leeds... Uh, I'm here in Leeds as a, as a body popper, breakdancer, part of Connection 4. I'm a rapper. There are no scratch DJs in Leeds. I'm talking that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking early 80s. Mm -hmm. There's no scratch mixed DJs. There are no... There's nobody tagging. Mm -hmm. There's nobody tagging on the buses. It's not mm -hmm. happening. That's a London thing. Graffiti on when you're passing on the train, you see that in London. You're not seeing it up here. No. Um, <clears throat> so we had an aspect of the hip hop culture, which was the rap, the break dancing, and the music. But we didn't know about the cutting up. Yeah. Beatbox wasn't even up here yet. Yeah. No, nobody was beatboxing, and nobody, nobody I knew, had techniques. It was the week that I left Leeds that Alistair Watley a guy I used to body pop with back right, in the day. Right. So Alistair Watley said, Speedo, come to my house when I've got something to show you. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just as you was leaving? Yeah. Oh, so I, plan I planned to, to leave in yeah, about yeah. a week and he, shot, he, he unveiled these uh, techniques. So I said, OK. He said, well, and this is what you need. Welcome to the future. He says, you're, you're rapping. He says, we can do this. I can do this mixing and scratching thing and we can make this happen. So I said, man. Alistair, wow. I'm, about, I'm about to go to London yeah. to, to, to work and do music and stuff. And uh, I said, if I was still about, we could do it, but I'm about to, to go. So Just that, that split would have, timing, that bro. Would have been, that would have been the crew. Yeah. That would have been the yeah. Leeds rap, rap crew. Um, Them techniques would have been an investment and yes. a half at that yeah. time. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. any, you know, that's like, yeah. that's like a bass player with a But in player. reality, though, I didn't know what scratching was. No. No, sorry. So you didn't see sorry, it in the same Sorry, way. I knew what scratching was, because we'd seen yeah. it on record. Do you like scratching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Um, I forget his name now. Um, yeah, DJ Chet. I forget the name yeah. of that track now. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, we knew, because yeah. we'd seen scratching. Yeah. But, okay, breaks. I didn't know what breaks were. Mm. I didn't know what breaks were. Extending the break. Quick mixing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what it was. Mad. I had no idea. Because so, it wasn't around. You were totally did. Nobody was doing it. <laughs> no. So all we knew was you chant your lyric. When it gets to the end of that section, pull up, select, down, come again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like we did on the Move sound. Move on to the next. Move on to the Just next. Just like we did on the sound system, right? Now imagine this. I've come to this WAG club competition, and the people that were working with Tim Westwood at the time were the Imperial mixers, Johnny. 
um, uh, what's it, Cutmaster yeah. Swift, yeah. and Paul Imperial. Yeah, Paul, I think Paul was a guy that kind of run that sound mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. the Imperial mixes. Paul was one of the mature guys in the set. Mm -hmm. So Paul, he came to me when I was about to go on stage, oops, <laughs> <laughs> when I was about to go and perform, and I came with my vinyl, which was a 12-inch copy of Good Times by Chic. Nice. Which had a very long break. Obviously, the break's the same as the um, Sugar Hill Gang mm -hmm. break. Yeah, 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 totally. And uh, I said, and it's marked where the break starts and when the break ends. It's marked with a bit of chalk or crayon. <laughs> so I've said to him, run that for me, please. And when it gets to the end, and I tell you, pull up, just pull up for me. He went, Speedo, I can cut it up for you. I can extend the break for you. I said, nah, man, it's cool, man. Just do what I'm asking you to do. When I say pull up, just pull up. I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> you get me? Wow. He's asking me. He, he That's crazy. Yeah, 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 he wants to extend the break, but I didn't know but what But you didn't he, know what it meant? I had no idea because <sighs> I'd never, I'd never seen it. And it was that night I got an education because he was doing that for other people. And I thought, okay, that's what he wanted to do for me. Isn't that? Something? But it was already too late because yeah. I, I, that was my style. My style was pull up, select down, yeah. come again, just yeah, like yeah, the sound system. Because yeah. that's what I learned on the sound system from KD Ranko, Daddy yeah, Stylo, yeah. <laughs> Pablo D. <laughs> you but people, res thing is though, people, <laughs> people respond to that influence. When they, mm. I have no doubt when they heard you do that, they mm -hmm. knew the legitimacy of your. Where I was coming from. Yeah, where yeah. you were coming yeah. from. Yeah. 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 Sound system's always been in you. And mm. now you're moving forward. Just mm. fast forward to now, mm. and your influence of, uh, of sound system is coming back into your music. So from hip hop, it's gone full circle almost, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. How's that been for you? It's been a, a natural journey. Um, <clears throat> I, when I returned to Leeds, I, in fact, I'll say around 2000 and, uh, oh gosh, 2007, eight. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was in a band called the Roots Family. And I joined the band just to be a keyboard player. Nice. Yeah, I, I joined just to be a keyboard. But they asked me to sing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really want to sing. But I ended up contributing a couple of my songs, songs that I'd written back in the 80s, actually. Nice. To, to this, um, this thing. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a bit lost here. You asked me a specific question. Yeah, how's it been going back into the... Right. <clears throat> yeah, into, so, back yeah. to the Roots. So basically, 2007 was that serious uh, dipping straight in, mm -hmm. really, because th this band, we rehearsed three, four times a week, so it was really quite deep. Yeah. And we got to a point wow. where we almost uh, completed an album, but because of that energies and yeah. sometimes negative energies, yeah. things didn't really matter. It happens sometimes. Yeah. It does yeah. happen sometimes. And that kind of died a death. But it was an experience for me, and it was one of the best ones, because uh, I learned things about when you're on a sound system and you're chatting on the mic, what you hear through that speaker is what everyone else hears. Mm -hmm. When you're on a stage doing a performance, what you hear is not what everyone else hears. That's true. That's so true. So you've got all your on-stage sound yeah. and each, each musician has their own sound. Yeah, it's designated specifically for their right. experience. In and I didn't know any of that. Right, right. That's what I learned working with the Roots. Family. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, I learned a lot. So... Um, and I'm not really a technical guy. You know, if I go into the studio and you've got that type of desk and it's a, whatever the brand name yeah. is, I don't watch brands, I don't no. watch names. I'm not that brand guy. No. I've never been that guy. No, no. But when it comes to other um, intricate things like learning skills, mm. I, I like to do that. Mm. But I'm not very techie. No, you don't need to be techie. I mean, it's a beautiful thing about <laughs> reggae, reggae and the roots. is like, yeah, well, yeah, of course, but mm. again, sound system culture leans towards mm. the feel. It has a feel, um, and I think that lends itself an air of freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, you can find your own individuality in that, can't you? Yeah, I, I, I think that this return to reggae has been, like I say, the natural move because I'm working with a, a guy in Ilkley called Sam mm -hmm. and Rebel Elements um, Studio. Mm -hmm. Um, and working with some brilliant musicians. Nice. And when you listen to the material, you just top. It's just top draw. Mm -hmm. And then recently, also, I worked with a guy called Low Tech. Yeah, wicked Low Tech. Yeah. Low Tech released an album and featured me on his album four times. Wow, that's dope. What what a 
salute. You know that word, chuffed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, I, and I'm still to this day, I'm like, wow, this man. And I never met Low no Tech. I never met the man. I spoke to him on the phone. Yeah. Which communicated by email a couple of times. But that, the man valued what I did so much yeah. that he's put it on his album. Recognised real, yeah. And then the track that I've recently released, released called The Cowboy is featured on his album before mine's released. That's beautiful. Ooh. The word chuffed comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Super chuffed, do you know what I mean? Like, You're a happy camper here, just in case you haven't <laughs> clocked it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fantastic. So this this return to... I can't, I can't even say return, because I never really left reggae music. No. Um, but I'm just working with it right now, and it's very natural. It, um, the patter is there anyway, because... Mm. My parents is from Jamaica, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so it's natural. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then because also not only that, um, I don't really think I'm a natural singer. I can sing, Killer Keller. I can sing. Yeah, <laughs> I can sing, but I don't think I'm a natural singer. The singing thing came in in probably early two thousands when my sister was doing a, um, a karaoke night, and then my sister got more into foster parenting mm -hmm. and one night she called me and said look can you run the karaoke for me because I've got a, uh, I'm fostering a child really? and I'm taking him on this evening wow. so can you run the karaoke tonight and I ended up running it for her and that's how you learned how to sing no 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 that's how I started singing publicly wow that's incredible yeah and that's something yeah because I wouldn't sing publicly huh? before and I wouldn't have called myself a singer it was only when I started doing it with my sister because I've been recording my own voice and singing on recordings, but I thought... But not publicly like that. I didn't want anyone to hear it. It seems to me... Yeah. seems to me, Speedo, that you tend to... Because your journey is within music, mm. certain scenarios play out where you're forced your hand in doing things mm. that may, to a lot of people, seem quite uncomfortable. Mm. But to you, it's part of a course. Mm. And you do it, and then all of a sudden, that's an extra bit of armour that you mm. put on your body. Mm. Oh, I love that. Mm. Thank anyway, you. It's part, of the, <laughs> it's part of the course. Of, and if you're creative out there, do that. That's what it's really all about. It's mm. like learning as you go. Mm. Brother, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's been fantastic. You know, honestly, uh, it would be nice to do some some collaboration one day. Maybe. Yeah, of course. Come on, Speeds. Come on. Because th this has been for me. I'll be honest with you. The th for me. It's working with people, mm -hmm. collaborate. I can, I was saying it the other day, look, I was saying, I, I watched a documentary about Little Richie. Mm. And um, I was really interested in, in his persona and his, he, what, he, what he thought about himself. Mm. I was interested in that, but I didn't see the whole thing. I probably sort of caught the last 20 mm. minutes of it. And I'm gonna go for a recap on that. But I said it to uh, a young man the other day, I said to him, look, and it sounds a bit braggadocio here, but I said, I'm the real deal. Mm. I said, there's a lot of people out there that do this thing and they're good vocalists, mm. they're good singers, they don't write, they, they, they can't, they're not creative, mm -hmm. but they're good performers and they look good. Proficient. Yeah. yeah, I said, but I said, look, I'm the guy that you can put on the stage with an old beat up guitar <laughs> and a microphone. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> And, and I'll give you a 20 minute performance, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Right, so uh, I'm, I say, I'm the real deal. Mm -hmm. I'm that guy who has got skills in all the different areas. Yes. But as much as it might sound arrogant me saying that, it's just true. Yeah. It's just real and it's just true. Yeah. So when we first came on, you said, this guy's like the, the, the real deal, the early. You know, I just think that I happened to be there at the time. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate um, to have people mentoring me. Mm. I went to Homer Harriet's dad, Mr. Harriet, for bass guitar lessons. I was doing a cleaning job in the evening, working up the road at a place called Schofields. <laughs> and I took my little money and uh, paid for my guitar lessons because I wanted to learn how to play, mm. play the bass. And um, I, you know, I had people that were around that were mentors and like I said the guys on the sound system that I witnessed do their thing the sports people that I that I, I don't want to say idolize because it's not a mm. good word idol 
but mm. <laughs> I um I admired them. Mm. I admired these guys and my heroes were here. We were fortunate to have people in the community doing things that we could see. Mm. From the guys who were building boxes for sound systems to the guys who were the community workers working at the community centre, mm -hmm. working at Palace Youth Centre. Mm -hmm. And we had the elders in our faces and pulling us up. Mm. This is the thing that is the fault today. Yeah. Yes, yeah. very yeah. much so. The, the, you know, the, el the elders are not around the youth. To support yeah. their actions. Yeah. And, 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 and to uh, pull them up. Yeah. <laughs> There a lot it. of the youths nowadays don't want to listen. They don't want to listen. They don't want to listen. <laughs> you better be listening to this podcast. That's one hell of a Jerry Springer sign on. If ever I heard one, you better be fucking listening. <laughs> Daddy Speedo and Al, thank you so much, my brother. Speedo, come on. We ain't done. <laughs> this part one, we'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> Daddy Speedo. Thank you, um, Keller. Thank you. Yo, Killer Keller podcast. Al, like in was out of fashion. Right here, right now. Leads, hold tight, salute and stand up. The general's in the building. <laughs> Big up, Monk. Big up, D. Listen, we're out like that, all right? Stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? <laughs> Peace! <laughs> Whoa! It's a really good That was crazy.